So here we get into the content. Cause I want to keep myself accountable to doing the same thing and staying disciplined. <laughs> All right. What up though? YouTube. It's your boy Pip, and we're back with another video. Today I'm looking crazy with this beard, so we're gonna do a quick little chop chop, and we about to start this video with the free plays. Let's get it, let's go. <laughs> All right, not bad, not bad, not bad. Quick little cleanup. I had to leave this, leave this. I'm trying to fix what's going on under here, bro, so I need to get my curly hair straightened up. But other than that, bro, we look good, we look ready. If I do this video, I got like more breakdowns, more charts, I'm gonna send it in the Telegram. So if you guys wanna see that before I start posting them on YouTube and stuff, definitely join the Telegram and check it out. With that being said, I'm about to start this video. I'm also making a little bit of dinner. I'm making some fresh potatoes. Let me show you guys real quick. See, I'm making some fresh potatoes right here using these hoes. Ended up getting him a new treat. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, we basic over here. We just use Velveeta, Velveeta busting. Then we got some chicken up in here right now. Can't really see it for real. I can turn the light it on. Yeah, you see what's going on. I see what's going on. Yeah, but we about to start that. Got some pizza in there, bro. I'm good off that. You already know the vibes, bro. We about to get this going, and we're going to get to the charts. We about to say what's up to the world, bro. You guys already know the vibes. We about to say what's up to the world. They ready for us. I think the world is ready for us. All right, so let's get it. Let's go. You guys going to see me. YouTube, what's going on? You guys already know the vibes. It's your boy Pip, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're going to be doing a recap on all the trades from last week. I did not do a breakdown last week, so I really want to change the way I do my content, and I want to be consistent so you guys can see the little switch up with the intro and with the vibes and stuff. I hope you guys like it. I want to put you guys more in the day of my life and follow my routine more so I can be more consistent when it comes to my content posting and giving you guys valuable content. So, that being said, hope you guys enjoy this video. It's going to be a quick video, just recaps, and I'm just going to show you guys the charts because I did redo um, I, four of my charts. I'm only going to show you guys th two. I'll only show you two of this video. The other two I'll make other videos for, and then that'll be it. So if you guys are ready, let's get to it. Let's go. One thing I want to just kind of go over before we even start breaking down, I know a lot of people might ask, where am I getting this level like how did i just mark this fib up from nowhere how come i didn't use this level how come i didn't use that high and i'll show you guys one thing i did was i went on the daily time frame resetted my chart <clears throat> went to that day breaks indicator i have and instead of keeping it on the daily kept it on the weekly breaks and i went okay then from this level before price made this higher low i simply told myself what was the lowest point price made in that market from last week well, obviously the week before this week and then what was the highest point price made in that week giving me an indication of how the next week could play out according to the fib since simply because the fib shows good key values of how price can react and break levels if it doesn't respect and um a good example i wish i could show but it would be like like a good example like right here off the fib notice how when price when price came, when price opened up, it already opened up above this level, came to retest um, the 236 level of the FIB, and then actually failed to continue up and then breaking. So I, I'm only saying that just because it gives you good indication on specific levels and on what, go, and on what is going on in the market. Because if you was to look to the left, you could see that there was a level of support here. So for the, the fact that price didn't respect it and then closed off, you could have capitalized on small sells if you wanted to or waited for more bearish confirmation, which is why I like the fit because it kind of shows you what you need to be looking for and the sense of tone in the market. So with that being said, that's where I got the fib from. So going back to the four hour chart, we're going to reset. We're going to go back and then we're going to go to the daily breaks again, just so you guys can see a little bit more clear of what I'm looking for. So all I'm really going to focus on is I want to focus on how price is uh, we're going to simplify price on, on the highs and lows of, of the market. So we could go from price all the way to, if I'm not mistaken, oh, my bad. Uh, that's why I gotta get that shit. 
<clears throat> but you can see we can go all the way from July 2024 and you can see that price made this high over here and if it was to continue back above you can see that once price made this high which was that big consolidation we were in for a long time from the start of August well like the end of August August 20th to the start of to the middle of um, September so take into consideration that when price made this high, it stayed above and bounced up above this level. Still giving you indication that not only that we were in a bullish momentum, that yes, price is consolidating and can show bearish potential. But taking consideration that when price came to make this high, it made this higher low, respecting the zone, and then kept attacking this level. When, when we were trading, we were trading lower highs, and what I was respecting was I liked how price consistently made lower highs. If price wasn't making lower highs and making higher lows, we would have not never been in this sell position. So that's why I want you guys to understand why I looked at price in this momentum of sales, because you can see that this was a high, and we failed to break it multiple times, giving lower momentum to attack all the way back down, which is a substantial amount of points you guys can see with the chart levels right here. So take consideration that once price came to retest at this level, once again, notice how price actually didn't close under these zones, didn't close under low levels, and didn't show bearish momentum under this zone right here, specifically continuing to go under. So that's when we should have started reversing our mindset, only when we started seeing higher lows in the market. But it's okay. It's all good. Pricing trading is all about learning and becoming better when it comes to looking at the charts. So... What I'm going to be looking at going forward is I'm going to simplify the market is because clearly we can see that it's bullish. We're going to go from a high to higher low and then price still is going a little bit higher and make higher lows and then continue going back above to make this high right here and then continue. So the only thing I'm going to focus on right now is that obviously price has made a high. So we could expect price to come down and show bearish momentum to make a higher low around this level specifically could be at 2600 or could or could tap the zone and continue or can go under so i want you to understand that's how i look at a pullback a pullback is never like oh price is going to tap here and then go price can do one of the other it can tap this wick level tap this zone or go under and try and chase this low um this higher low right here and then potentially go back up so with that being said, I want to just focus on price changing its structure and giving me a higher low momentum to start capitalizing off of buys. And that's really it with um, the recap for gold, because <clears throat> you guys can clearly see when price came in for Fed rates, if I'm not mistaken, price came in to sell off just to giving another retest, finally pulling back into the Fed to give a clean pullback. So if you guys look at the 382, um, the 25 four eight level if you really look at it on the lower time frame that's like a two five fifty zone that price came to react which is kind of like a quarter point area so understand that when price came to retest it immediately started showing higher lows retesting all of this bearish reaction from news and then continued back and you guys can clearly see this was wednesday so that is when that happened and then once that happened indication came back into the market because fundamentals gave you the tone. It lets you know that, all right, Fed rates are coming, which is going to weaken the dollar. So it is good to go back into investing gold. So that's why gold ended up breaking back above and making new all-time highs. And with that being said, that really is it. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. And let's get to the second one. The second one we're going to do, we're going to do SPX. SPX, we're going to simplify it and go to the daily time frame. And just reset the chart. Where I had gotten the FIB, I think I did the same thing. It was either the daily or the four hour, if I'm not mistaken. Cannot remember at the top of my head for this one. Yes, it was the, it was, uh, it was the, yes, it was the weekly. It was the, it was the daily with the weekly break. But one thing I take into consideration was I may, I was focusing on how, how price came to make this high right here and then ended up coming all the way down to make this higher low. Don't get me wrong, yes, price did make this lower high, but as always, I always look at indices as a bullish pair. And if price was to sell down and start showing bearish momentum, it would have had to break structure all the way down here. So if price was making higher low levels up here, that is a good indication as to why I threw the FIB on and I wanted to see how price can respect the FIB, especially when it comes to zones when price is pushing through. So now, Going on the one hour, you guys can clearly see one. once that FIB was thrown on, we could have seen price coming through. We could have took entries at the 886, 786, 618, 
and then price came to retest. Then we could have hold. Obviously, our stop loss would have been under these low levels, uh, typically around 1.1, but I would have personally just had it under the low levels. I wouldn't need to have it too far. And then, as you can see, when price came, it started to shoot right back through these levels, signifying that AE6 level, that 5420 level, was a level of support and continued. Once price broke this level, you could have held your trade. This is why I like to use the FIB when it comes to indices and gold. I don't like to throw it around when it, on like Forex, GJ, on all these other things. I like to simplify it and keep it on the indices and gold because I like how clean it really respects the FIB when it comes to higher time frame reactions. And then with that being said, we're going to go to the four hour in the four hour with SPX. The big thing that I want to take into consideration is that, yes, interest rates came and that's not the best thing when it comes for businesses. But in reality, you have to look at it as you have to look at it in a position of that. There is more money going into the consumer's pockets to now flush the economy once again. But obviously, inflation is in a position where we are cooling, and then eventually, price is going to want to start pushing back into indices. So the way I look at indices is I think indices are going to start playing on a big time frame now. One, because we broke above and made all-time highs, meaning that if price wanted to break above, back above 5730, we can continue to go bullish. But taking consideration that we are playing on the big time frames now. If price is to start to come back under the zone, showing you that they want to retest after making this high, we could potentially come all the way back down to 5390. And that's why I want you to focus on on how indices, once we've had that fundamental tone, we don't have another Fed rate cut till November 18th, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go look. We don't, yes, right here. So we don't have uh, actually the 7th. We don't have another meeting till the 7th. And then the 18th is this of the 18th of December. That's why I got that wrong because I seen the 18th right there. But yeah, we don't have another Fed meet till this um, the November 7th. And price is already showing you that they're thinking 51% of people are thinking that we're going to get a 50 BPS cut again, while 48% are thinking this just could be a 25 to 50. And this is where we're at right now. We're at a 47. We're at 4755. Um, current rate for our interest rate. So if price is to do another 50 BPS, you guys can simply look at the reactions that happened this year, 2007, and correlate on how you guys can see indices can play out. And with that being said, that really is it when it comes to the recaps. I don't want to give too much on what I think because um, the zo my zones and my drawings could pretty show you a, a lot of what I'm thinking already. So I don't want to just go too deep into making everything confusing. I want to show a clean recap and then show my charts so you guys can get a good indication on how to prepare for next week. And then with that being said, that really is it when it comes to the charts. What's going on YouTube? Quick little thing that I wanted to start doing is I want to bring you on my journey and my routine, like with my life. When it comes to walking my dog, working out, and just chilling in the house when I'm just looking at charts, watching YouTube videos and stuff. Because I want to keep myself accountable to doing the same thing and staying disciplined. So not only that, you guys can keep me accountable, I keep myself accountable, I can see when I start to drift off, you guys can see it, and we can always keep that motivation always ready to go. So just wanted to bring you guys on this journey, I'm walking with my dog, I'm about to go to this little spot I like to go to, where I make my content for Instagram, YouTube, do all reels there. So I just wanted to show you guys that, be great, <laughs> honestly, like, always hold yourself accountable. like. There's always ways you could do things better. There's always ways you can work harder. So if you guys can see that, take it. If you guys have a place where you can procrastinate and be comfortable, try and turn that weakness into a strength. Use it to help you now do other things while you're doing that task that you think is so hard. You know? Well, enjoy the video. Let's get back to it. Okay, so before I end this video, I just wanted to give you guys a little a little bit of knowledge in one of the books that i've already read we've already talked about it it's the richest man of babylon if you guys watch one of the videos where i was talking about one of the chapters today i really didn't want to go too deep into explaining just wanted to read this first page of the five laws of gold just some quick little some quick little pen flips that you guys can take with you guys because one thing that i really loved about this book that it explained how the value and the knowledge of how to gain and how to maintain and keep gold is way more precious than gold itself. So I wanted to really give you guys that, those laws and then let you guys take them in and understand them from your own perspective. If you 
you guys ever want to talk more about it, you guys can hit me up. But yeah, chapter 14, the five laws of gold. Um, law one, gold cometh gladly in, 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 in increasing quantities to any man who will put by not less than one tenth of his earnings to create an estate for his future and that of his family. Law two, gold laboreth diligently and contentedly for the wise owner who finds for a profitable and employment and multiplying even as the flocks of the field. Meaning in a sense of understanding that once you gain gold, you need to learn how to multiply gold. Law three, gold clingeth to the protection of the cautious owner who invests it under the advice of men wise in its handling. This is meaning furthering your money through investments or businesses and going in with people that you have a sense of that like like let's say like um let's say like you're a basketball player and you don't know how to start a shoe brand so you'd invest into people that already know where they're at that have that experience but you don't want to go and invest with people like sketchers because sketchers is trying to tell you they're trying to sell you the new air jordans but you rather would go with jordan because jordan has the experience of making that shoe so that's just like a little example understand Gold, uh, um, law, law, um, the law of gold for number four. Gold slippeth away from the man who invested in businesses or purpose with which he is not familiar or which are not approved by those skilled in its key. Gold, um, law five. Gold flees the man who forceth to impossible earnings or followeth the alluring advice of tricksters and schemers or who trusted to his own inexperience and romantic desires and investments. So those are the five laws of gold. I will explain them more when it comes to like dropping on my content or just going deeper into the bit, um, going deeper into the book with you guys. But I really just want to leave that with you guys. And I really want you guys to get more knowledge and get more content when it comes to watching my videos because I want you guys to live with me, basically. I want you guys to see that my goal is to read and watch the charts and just focus in day in, day out, do the same thing every day because I need to get into a position of success and not a position of pleasure. And reading books really opened my mind to that sense of anything can be positive or pleasurable, especially if it's a positive reinforcement. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be great the other ways up. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. PGP for life, y'all. You know the vibes. Ha!